Are you a beginner quilter about to finish your first quilt? Or perhaps you just need to finish one really quickly. Today I have 10 fast and easy quilting designs to get you to the finish line. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Once you finish making your quilt top, it's now time for a totally different kind of sewing. Taking your back, a batting, and a flimsy and putting it all together. I've already made a video on how to make a quilt sandwich and I'll link that video down in the notes. But now it's time to move on to the actual quilting. It's always best to do a test piece first. That way you can sort out any tension issues. You want to use a quilting needle or a top stitch needle. And often I will go up a size to a 90, especially if I'm using a 40 weight thread. I use quilting gloves. This pair is sold as actual quilting gloves. They are lightweight with tacky fingers. But these ones I purchased from the dollar store in my first dollar store sewing hacks video. And in most places works just as well. The first five patterns I'll use a walking foot. A walking foot allows all three layers of your quilt sandwich to feed evenly through your sewing machine. It's an added expense and it's a little fiddly to attach, at least on my machine it is, but the results are definitely worth it. I start one to two inches from my quilt top. So if I get a thread nest, it's on a part that I'm going to trim off. The first pattern is a long wave and it starts with just one long wavy line. You can mark it off ahead of time or you can make it up as you go along. Then just repeat the wave on either side of the first line. At the start of the wave, I like the distance between lines to be about one to two inches. What's really nice about this design is you don't need to worry about getting the wave exactly the same every time. Any variations just add to the texture and this is the design that I used on my first Stash Buster quilt. Out of all 10 designs, wonky lines are probably the easiest to do, and you don't even need to practice. Just try to sew a straight line, and you'll find that it swerves to the left and swerves to the right. I like to sew my first line down through the middle of my quilt. Then I make another roughly parallel line to that down the right side and then I repeat it till I get to the edge. Then I turn the quilt around and do it all again. I like to sew my lines one to two inches apart and it's perfectly okay if the swerves don't line up. And this is the pattern that I used in my Stash Buster 2 quilt because this one just zips along. I'm sure many of you made the beginner mistake of thinking that sewing a straight line in the ditch was the simplest, easiest way to go. Just follow the seam lines, like how hard can it be? The challenge is that our seam lines are not often as straight as they could be. And where seams intersect, it can get very bulky. It is much easier to just move your presser foot about a quarter to a half an inch or even a little bit more to the side of the seam and either use the edge of your presser foot or the walking foot guide to keep you straight. Normally, I let the block pattern tell me how far apart to space my lines, but they don't need to be equally spaced to look good. I have also found sewing diagonal straight lines pretty easy and forgiving. Just use a masking tape to mark the diagonal between the two corners. I showed this technique in my five sewing hacks with masking tape video, and I'll link that in the notes. You can take the wonky or the straight line quilting pattern and make another set of lines perpendicular to them. How evenly you space the lines is totally up to you. You can make areas of dense quilting by adding a few extra lines of quilting in both directions and on the diagonal. Take either a wonky line or a straight line and quilt them in a random pattern from one side to another. I do suggest that you make a rough map ahead of time so that you get the pattern result that you want and ensure that you don't leave any large unquilted areas. You can also do lines that pivot or meander. The choice is yours.
And with all these walking foot designs, you might also play with the decorative stitches on your machine. The second group are free motion designs. This means our feed dogs are down and we're using our darning foot. We place our hands like so. How far apart you put them is a little bit of experimentation between the size of your hands and the size of your quilting platform. Too close together and you'll need to move your hands more often or find yourself getting sloppy with your technique. Too far apart and you'll lose control of your quilt and end up using too much body strength. So there's a learning curve as you find your groove and you put your pedal to the max. If you can lower your machine speed, that will help in the beginning. But no matter if you're a beginner or an experienced quilter, it's always good to start with a practice piece. And in this method, we want to pull up our bobbin thread before we start. These five designs all use a loopy wax on, wax off method. First we make a loop, then we wax on to the right, make another loop, and then we wax off to the left and make another loop. I like to alternate looping right with looping left, but if you like to do two or more of the same at once, that's okay too. And you'll soon realize that filling the space evenly is much more important than making perfectly round loops. This is similar to small loops, but we have more space between the loops. Sort of a branch with little berries on it. This design is less dense than the small loops. I also like to use this design when I am quilting sashing because it's good in small places. This is exactly the same motion as the small loops, but we are upsizing the loops. Larger loops mean a less dense pattern, less dense means less quilting, and less quilting means you're done faster. The last shape is an elongated loop. It's the same wax on, wax off motion as before, but it's exaggerated in one direction. This method is great to do in strips or in triangles, but when I'm using this in free motion quilting, I usually design a pattern of these elongated loops that I can repeat over a larger area. This method, combines small loops, branching loops, elongated loops, and large loops all together. They can be totally random or vary by block. You can even do small loops inside of larger loops. This method is great for wondering brains like mine who like to change it up as they go along. So just a few more things. Pacing is very important when you're working on your sewing machine. Take pauses and adjust your posture often. Take breaks, get up and stretch. And you can use multiple techniques in one quilt. This quilt, I've used straight lines in the borders. I've used large loops in the middle. And then I've used branching loops in a focus block. Experiment with thread weights and colors. You can have a lot of fun mixing these all up. And finally, don't worry about mistakes. You're in the home stretch now, and you'll be amazed at how much is forgiven once you get the binding on. This video is just one in a series on sewing machine quilting. I'll link to the playlist in the notes below. There's more to come in this series, but if there's anything in particular you want to know more about, please put that down in the comment section below. Coming on Monday, November 30th, I'll have Pearl and Gooding on Karen's Quilt Circle. We will be talking about the intersection of storytelling, quilting, and how she juggles both. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so that YouTube will notify you when I make new video. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts. And you can subscribe to my newsletter at JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.